Hey guys, welcome to a new tutorial. Today we will be recreating Dota 2's Wheel of Wisp, a very cool ability that drags units towards it every couple of seconds. You can use this for a cool boss fight or I don't know, it's up to you. Let's begin. I'll begin by setting up my scene. You know the usual plane with a checker material. Cool, now create a new game object. Call it Wheel of Wisp and reset its position. Create a new particle system and call it Wisp. Set its start speed to zero, then down under its shape setting, set all of these values to the minimum possible so that it looks like an orb. Make this orb a child of our Willow Wisp game object, then reset its position and rotation. Move it up a little bit. Alright, we got our Wisp looking fine. Uh, let's create the circle that shows its AoE. Create a new sphere game object and call it AOE. Reset its position. Make this object a child of our Will-O-Wisp. Cool. Let's scale it up on its X and Z values to something like 20. For the Y value, I'm going to try and get our Wisp inside it, so... Mm. 8 seems to do it for me. Create a new material and call it AOE material. Change the render mode to Fade. Click the color picker and change the alpha to um, 120. Yeah, 120 looks fine. Create a new particle system as a child of our Wisp game object and call it Effect. Under its shape settings, set the shape to sphere and lower its radius to the minimum possible so that they spawn inside our Wisp. Go back up here and set its speed to 1 and duration as well as lifetime to 2. Simulation to 4 so that it's a little bit faster. Enable size over lifetime and select the curve going down. I'm actually going to increase the lifetime and duration to 3. Yeah, that's better. Last thing we will do here is set its emission to 0. Create a new script called Wisp Behavior and add it to our Wheel of Wisp game object. Alright, let's begin coding. Before we start with our variables, we will remove this and add system.link. I will explain it in a second. For variables, there will be a bunch of them. Uh, first one will be tags to check. We can assign this in the inspector later on an int that will be the amount of flickers this wisp will do, the movement speed of the affected units, the speed at which they will look at the wisp, the radius, how close from the wisp the affected units will stop, the duration of the flicker, the duration between flickers, and lastly how much will the wisp float up and down. For private variables, we will need two booleans for our loops, then two floats for our timers, the effect particle system inside our wisp, our wisp transform, and two vector trees that we will use for our wisp's floating effect. Under start, we need to assign our wisp, then save our up and down positions. So up pose equals wisp that position, and same for our down pose. Their Y values need to be changed using the idle float distance. For up pose we add it and for down pose we subtract it. Next we need to assign our particle and set our timers. We make sure is alive is set to true. You can also do it up here but I'd rather do it at the start. This really doesn't matter, it's up to you. That's it for start. Moving on to update, we need to check if we are alive, and if we are, we do our wisp floating movement. So wisp.position equals vector3.lerp, and we lerp between our up pose and down pose that we previously set inside start. We check if our flicker amount is bigger than zero, then inside it we do another check to see if we are currently flickering. Down here we will create a new function called flicker 
and added inside our if statement. We also need to take in a parameter of vector3, so here we will use transform.position. However, if we are not flickering, we need to check if our rest duration timer is bigger than zero. If it is, we lower it by delta time. If it is lower or equals to zero, then we need to begin flickering. First, we set our particle system's rate over time to whatever value you wish. I think 20 will do fine for me. Set the flickering boolean to true as well as reset the flicker duration timer. Awesome, now if our flicker amount is smaller or equals to zero, we set its alive boolean to false. And up here, if this boolean is false, we destroy ourselves. All done with update. Inside our flicker function, we will check if the flicker duration timer is bigger than zero, and if it is, we lower it by delta time and set the flickering to true. We need to grab all units inside our radius, so we use physics overlap sphere for this. Next, we do a for each loop to check every single collider's tag, and if this gives you an error or is not showing up for you, then make sure you have system that link up here. This allows us to use that contains for arrays. Cool, uh, now before we start moving the units towards our wisp, we need to start the distance between them so that we can use our stop range flow to stop units from entering our wisp. We finally move the colliders transform towards our wisp using the movement speed variable. For rotation, we need to calculate the direction first and then convert this into a quaternion and finally rotate the colliders transform using our rotation speed variable. If our flicker duration is smaller or equals to zero, that means we just finished flickering. So um, let me go up to update real quick and copy this, then paste it down here. Just change the rate over time to zero to turn off the particle system. We also need to reset the flicker rest timer and lower the flicker amount. Last thing we will do here is draw sphere gizmos so that we can visualize our AOE radius inside the scene window. Back in Unity, we can see all our public values here. You toy with them as much as you like. I found out that this worked best for me. We just gotta add the tags in here. I'm going to type in enemy. For testing, add a new sphere game object and change its tag to enemy. I'm going to move it a bit and then duplicate it a couple times and hit play. Cool. You can see the particle place whenever we are dragging enemies towards us. When this value reaches zero, it will destroy itself. Yep, awesome. It's all working nicely. Let's toy around with these values a bit. I'm going to set its flicker amount to something really high. For flicker rest duration, I think 0.3. And also movement speed to something really low. Flicker duration to um, 1. Yeah, okay. Hit play and let's check it out. They are actually moving too slow. Let me increase it to 1. Yeah, okay, that's better. You can see them stopping exactly 1.5 units from the wisp. If we set this to 1, they move a bit closer. If you set this to 0, then they just all move inside each other, so yeah, I always keep this value higher than 0. To visualize the AOE radius, Inside your scene window, make sure you have gizmos enabled and you will be able to see it. Yeah, 20 is too big. I think 10 is fine. That fits inside our AOE ball thingy. And that's it for this tutorial guys. I hope it was useful for you.
Stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.